What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and I have three words for you. Restore the Snyderverse. I'm just realizing that that could be four words. I recently saw the new Snyder Cut version of the Justice League and even though it was four hours long, it was way better than the original theatrical release. And so there's this swell of interest online to get Zack Snyder to direct more of these movies and I wanna do my part to bring awareness. And so what can I do besides design a really cool concept website full of awesome DC characters and information inside of Figma. It's gonna feature auto layout and smart animate and components and variables and interactive components. It's gonna be super fun and we're gonna do it in two parts. In this part, we're gonna do the design and then in part two, we're gonna do the prototype. Are you ready to restore? First off, we want to restore the Snyderverse. That's what this whole thing's about. So let's grab this and just bring this hashtag in. I think that could be a good place to start. My artboard is about 1550 by 1024. Um, and I just randomly, <laughs> I just randomly chose that size. So we're not really working on grids today. We're gonna do something that's a little bit more immersive and kind of like full width and interesting. So we're not really going for that aligned kind of like 12 column grid. We're not caring about that stuff at all in this, in this uh, design tutorial. So we do have a library full of assets that we can use. And um, although we're not really working or thinking about, you know, scaling this website, it might be nice to have a menu. So jumping over from that library and just pasting a version of our little menu icon in. Let's break this uh, from the style and just add it uh, to be in white. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. The simple stuff is pretty much out of the way. Let's align it over here. K for scale, just make it a little bit bigger so it fits the rest of the stuff we have going on there. And then we'll just put it somewhere over here for now. Let's get rid of this because what I actually wanna do is um, I wanna add another fill and I wanna add another fill. So first off, let's hide the top one and we don't want this middle one to be a gradient, we want it to be an image. This is where we'll be able to go in and grab Wonder Woman's hometown. I don't even know how to pronounce the name of that hometown. Um, but then we could just bring it way down. So we just have a little bit of this background, just kind of chilling, kind of hanging out, okay? So that's there and let's come back now and turn on that final fill layer that we have on top. Let's make it really dramatic. It was really, the, the Snyder Cut was really moody. Everything was really dark. So let's go a radial gradient uh, going from black to black. And then uh, the one on this side needs to be nothing. And the one on the outside needs to be very, very dark. And then we can close this up and we can just drop down the opacity of it. Just a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a silhouette around the outside, just to, again, to making it just a little bit moodier, okay? Um, okay, let's bring Wonder Woman in. Um, and we have this massive image. If we want to, we can come into the image and actually switch it to crop. Um, and then that would allow us, I think we're just gonna kinda go from the waist up. So I'm just gonna crop this image to be like so, and it doesn't need to be so wide. And this is just gonna help me so that I can still manipulate and maneuver around a little bit, okay? So there's our image, nice and big there, pretty cool. Let's just toss her right there on the side. What can we do? I tell you what, let's, let's do a little bit of dimensionality. I'm kinda thinking let's bring this text in and we will align it at least with what we got going on here on the left-hand side. So we're not going completely AWOL. We're not doing our own thing. We're still doing some alignment. All right, um, that could be pretty cool. So we'll just put that text in there, but I feel like nah, this is pretty good. We don't, I'd love it if she could just kind of cover at least a little bit of the text, right? This is like a movie website. So everything can be a little bit more like, I don't know, dramatic and fun, kind of like that. So. Here's, here's what we wanna do also. I'm thinking, let's put a series of cards down here that represent our characters. Maybe they'll lead behind our main character. Maybe it'll sit on top, I'm not really sure yet. But I'd love for this to be able to scroll up and kind of out of the way, you know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is right click and I'm gonna frame this selection. So it's brought the frame, it's introduced a frame around the entire thing. So we're gonna call this uh, text and we're gonna put colon Wonder Woman, WW, like that, okay? And then I'm gonna take my frame and I'm just gonna lead it up something like that and then I'm gonna clip the content. Now the text is stuck, right? Uh, or it's clipped out. And what we'll be able to do later on when we prototype is actually make this a vertical scrollable area when content 
leads outside the constraints of a frame, you have the ability to either scroll horizontally or vertically inside Figma. So we'll talk about that later, but that's nice. Just popping that in there. Now we're able to kind of, we're gonna be able to scroll. Now we're gonna wanna be able to create our cards. Let's move this up and make a little bit more room. I like the, the dramatic nature of this giant character that's in here. So actually before we do that, let's, let's tackle this right side um, because I have these other, what I was kind of thinking were gonna be stats. So kind of real name, Diana Prince, but we wanna do something kind of interesting here. So um, I'm gonna grab both of them. See, we don't wanna grab our Wonder Woman character. And I'm gonna hit Shift A to add an auto layout. And that will allow me to, if this somehow like uh, I add multiple lines to it, it'll all stay within the auto layout. With the auto layout, I can actually move things around as well, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna grab this and let's do another one. Uh, maybe just space it away about 20 pixels. And I'm gonna grab these, both of these, and hit Shift A again to create another auto layout. Why? Because if for some reason I did this, it's gonna stretch the whole thing out. It's gonna space everything evenly. And now I can add multiple stats without worrying if I am constantly tweaking my spacing between elements. So we have some, some different descriptions of, uh, or stats down here. So for instance, here's her powers, right? This is gonna be one that is gonna stretch out quite a bit. So how about we'll put super powers right here and then we will just pop those in. See how everything stretches out? It's being contained on the left and right hand edges but it's expanding vertically, which is exactly what we want. So that's pretty cool. Let's do a uh, first appearance. That's gonna be another one. Now again, this is what's really cool about auto layouts. If I command or control C and V and paste, it's gonna put another one vertically in that layout. You know it's in the layout because uh, if we click on this parent frame, we can see all of our internal frames that are there of our stats. And then you can see the master frame and we're laying things out either horizontally or vertically. And we can control the spacing for all of them at one time, so maybe maybe 28 is a little bit better. Okay, uh, that works good for us. So we wanna put first appearance right here, and then let's go back and copy that from the web, pop that in, all right, and let's do, let's see, alter ego, we already did that. Um, that that seems, oh, uh, hometown, let's do hometown. I think it's like Themyscira or something like that. Uh, what's the name of it? Here it is, Themyscira. So let's do hometown, uh, boom, like this, Themyscira. And let's do one more actually. Uh, we'll put current location, that'll be kind of fun. Current location. Uh, I think she's in London. In the movie she is at least. So let's do London, England. Okay, so now we have a series of stats. I'm gonna do a line right now. I'm gonna hit L for line inside of uh, Figma, and I'm gonna draw a line from top of my frame to the bottom, I'm gonna make this white, and I'm just gonna use transparency. I'm just gonna lessen the opacity of it a little bit, so we kinda start blocking out a little bit of a section. So maybe like 22 pixels, something like that. Uh, okay, so let's take that and just move that over, and where is our menu? We wanna take all of these elements, move them up to the top, right? Am I right? Okay. So let's take that and just bump it over a little bit. So we have a little bit of spacing and let's group that whole thing together. We could have put it in auto layout, but we don't care. We're just doing that really, really quickly. So we pop that in, that's pretty good. The space between the line and the, uh, the top navigation is about 47 pixels. That's a really weird number, but we'll just kind of match it at 47 pixels like that. And then we're gonna take our line and command or control C and V and paste another one of these. And let's just rotate it this way. And let's block out a little bit of the top like this. This could be cool. Should we let it go all the way across our, maybe, maybe all the way across our artboard like this. Maybe we wanna do something like that. But we definitely want our lines to go to the back, right? So that our character, again, kind of like overlaps everything. So if we wanted to do that, that's probably the way we would do it. Then we could move this up into the middle. That could be kind of cool. Um, yeah, that could be all right. Uh, let's let's do that. That could be kind of fun. So I'm gonna steal one of these pieces of text from it inside, and let's just do something really fast, um, like follow or you know DC online or something like that. And we'll just close this size of this text up. Now everything's kind of aligning, right? Even in the main navigation, everything's kind of aligning. We're gonna line these elements up. And then let's just place filler for social media. We'll just add a couple of ellipses. I just hit O for ellipse. 
And um, I'm just gonna do like one, two, three, something like that. That could work. Now, okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's zoom out and see what we have so far. That's pretty cool. I kinda don't like this line going across, so I'm gonna move it back and maybe just encapsulate everything over to this side. Now, when you're using transparency to kind of in your lines or your elements that you're using, you just wanna make sure that they're not overlapping, otherwise we'll get that little weird double kind of, kind of uh, transparency laying on top of each other. So we're just gonna go pixel perfect on that one and that looks pretty good. And because we're not doing something over to the side, we can kind of move these elements up. Let's just group that and just move that up to the top like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now we can take our navigation and kind of bump that up to the top. I think that looks good. It leaves some space. We do have a little bit of space now here on the bottom left and the bottom right. So why don't we do on the bottom right like an area where you could watch the movie or see a preview of Justice League. So I'm just gonna hit, um, yeah, F for frame. Again, use frames. Stop using rectangles or groups. Start using frames for everything. We're gonna fill it like this and switch the fill of that to an image. That could work out good for us. And then we're just gonna grab our Justice League movie poster like that. Um, okay, that looks pretty cool. It kind of draws your attention down there a little bit, which I think is kind of fun. Probably gonna wanna do, you know, it doesn't stand out enough though because this image is all of, you know, like photorealism or, or just, the, just the colors that are found inside of the image are kind of blending with the colors that are found on the character. So let's do another fill on top of it. Uh, take it off of linear to a solid. Let's come back down and again do the similar thing We'll just make this a little bit transparent. So now the blue kind of pops that works I think and then let's grab a little piece of text here and we will zoom in and pop it right where we need it and let's have it say like uh, watch The watch the movie or maybe watch the preview The tr Did it say preview anymore? Did we say trailer? Trailer watch the trailer. There we go. That's what we want. Let's center align this inside of our box and then hit O for O for ellipse one more time. And really what I should be doing is using a frame, but I'm not gonna do that. Actually, let's use a frame. I'm gonna hit F for frame. I'm gonna draw a frame out. I'm gonna fill it with white. Let's fill it with white. And then let's take the border radius of that frame. And then we will grab our polygon tool and we'll draw a little bit of a play button inside, rotating it, putting it in the center, and let's make it our dark blue color. That kind of pops a little bit. And let's just add one pixel of border radius. And I like it. So everything's in that frame. So we just call that our play button like that. Cool, everything's looking good. Now let's just space these out a little bit more and center the whole thing. I love it. Let's just wrap that whole thing up. I think it's, it is all wrapped up because it's in the frame. Oh my gosh, I love frames so much. So that's down there in the corner. Now, this is another question. Do we want that to be in front of our model or behind our model? I think behind, but I think maybe what I'm realizing is our character is just a little bit too big. So let's actually, let's keep, keep Wonder Woman up this way and go in and just recrop and bring in a little bit more of the character, okay? So again, and now it's not blocking the movie trailer as much, which I think is kind of important, all right? Um, so we're gonna call that stuff at the top socials, like that, we have our top now. Let's just lock all that stuff, Command or Control Shift L to lock it. And we can bring our stats up a little bit, just kind of balancing them there. Let's, let's also lock our, yeah, let's lock our lines here. We're not gonna need to move those lines, I don't think, at all. And good, okay, pretty solid. Now let's do the last thing um, for our design, which is create some character cards, shall we? And we'll use these character cards to kind of move back and forth in our prototype. And uh, they'll look pretty cool, I think. So, all right, let's zoom in. I'm gonna hit F for frame. Again, use frames whenever you can. I don't know, maybe something like that. Maybe something like that. And let's move these up. And what I'm gonna do is on my text here, just hit Shift A to make a layout out of them and uh, character info, we'll name that. That way we can kind of reuse that same style. Let's come down here and just for funsies, fill it with a color. I think we'll probably want to fill it with our dark blue and then we're gonna break it because we're gonna add an image inside and do a similar thing, right? So let's, let's pick one. Uh, it's probably gonna be Batman. So let's pick, this is like Gotham City, so we'll drop that inside. Pretty moody, pretty dramatic. 
and I love it. Uh, but we're gonna bring it down because we want it to kind of be in the background, okay? Okay, that's pretty fun. Now let's get Batman and bring Batman inside. He is absolutely massive, that's okay. Um, we're going to just cut him by hitting Command or Control X, select our frame, paste him. Now he will be inside our frame and we can shrink it down. And uh, let's lead him off the edge here like this. That could be kind of cool. Uh, so again, we have our frame and we are clipping the content. If we select or unselect that, we'll be able to see everything outside, but we don't want that. We want to, when you use frames and you clip the content, it, asks like, it acts like an immediate mask. So it's a good thing to know and a good thing to use. Again, now we're gonna take our frame and just bring that background down a little bit more, that image. Let's add a stroke here. I think that that could be good. And let's choose that light blue color, but then let's break that light blue color and just lighten it a little bit. And let's add a slight border radius to this card. That might be still a little too intense for that. Yeah, we just want something real light right at the edges. I, I tell you what, let's also, um, let's add a little bit of effect here, a drop shadow on this card, just really light one. So we're gonna take it down from 25 pixels to about 15. It's a pretty dark interface, um, but that's okay. Oh, we, we, it still works for us, right? And then we need a little bit of text. So let's just steal, let's just snag some text from anywhere else, like this stat text we're just reusing. We don't wanna create lots of new textiles. Let's just say Batman right here, and we'll just kind of hug the text there. It's inside of our frame. Boom, easy, nice looking card, really good. We're gonna call this a character card. And now let's fast forward and create a bunch of cards that represent the other members of the Justice League. Okay, I think that's enough. We have a couple more of our character cards. We're just gonna cut those and bring them into um, our scene here, Boop, just like that. And why don't we grab all of them? So we're just gonna grab each one of these character cards, hit Shift A to create an auto layout, and then from there we can control the spacing in between them pretty easily like that. And we just wanna keep everything lined up. Now the question becomes, do we, do we keep these in front of, or should we, maybe be like a little bit more experimental and drop them behind so you can kind of horizontally scroll. I'll tell you what, just for the fun of it, uh, let's keep it like this and we'll see what it looks like once we do our prototyping. But that is our design. Well, that's it. That's part one of our Snyderverse Justice League website concept in the bag. We got all the major design stuff done. And when we come back, you'll see all the rest of the characters on their own artboards, their own pages. And we'll be ready to start animating this thing and adding interactions, micro interactions, all sorts of fun stuff. So stick around. But I want to know, what would you have done differently in this design? And have you seen the Snyder? cut let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel i do lots of videos about design and development and design walkthroughs just like this one so maybe stick around hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out hope you guys are designing amazing things hope you're making amazing things and i hope you start watching the snyder cut pretty soon because it's long i mean i'm serious it's gonna take you a long time to watch it you better get started